Hello everybody and welcome back to another radiology tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing the anatomy of the paranasal sinuses. We're going to look at how they relate to the nasal cavity in space as well as how they communicate with the nasal cavity itself. We're also going to look at a couple of important structures that surround these paranasal sinuses that we need to be aware of and may need to warn our friendly surgeons about before they go poking around within these paranasal sinuses. So let's start by identifying them and naming them on a scan. Here we have a coronal plane CT, we bone windowed it. We want to come to the most anterior portion of the scan. The first thing we notice is we can see our frontal sinuses within the frontal bone here. As we head more posteriorly, we'll see our maxillary sinuses starting to form as well as our ethmoid sinus here. So we can see our left and our right maxillary sinus, our ethmoid air cells of the ethmoid sinus, heading all the way back and then we should see the sphenoid sinus then come into view. Here is our sphenoid sinus. So we have our frontal, maxillary, ethmoidal and sphenoid sinuses. Those are the four paranasal sinuses. So here we can see our sphenoid sinus. We're at the level of the anterior clinoid processes. As we head more posteriorly, we should see that dip into the cella turcica, as we can see here, dips down. And then we should come up to the dorsum cella here with our posterior clinoid processes. As we head even more posteriorly, we'll see our clivus forming here. That's where our basilar artery will be coming on the other side of that clivus. Okay, so let's head forward. We're going to go and just describe the nasal cavity. Now, the anatomy of the nasal cavity is really important when we're describing the communications between the paranasal sinuses and the nasal cavity itself. So let's start by having a look at the boundaries of the nasal cavity, the bony boundaries. The floor of the nasal cavity is made up by the hard palate. Our lateral walls are made up by the medial walls of our maxillary sinus. We can then look at the roof of our nasal cavity. Let's go slightly more anteriorly. We can see just a little bit of a crista galli coming up here. And then we have an, our ethmoid bone coming all the way and attaching to our frontal bone that makes up the roof of the orbit. There's three segments to this ethmoid bone that we can describe. There's a horizontal lamella coming away from the crista galli. Now the crista galli is separating our two olfactory bulbs, which lie on top of this horizontal lamella. It then cups round the olfactory bulb and we get a vertical lamella coming up. And then we get the roof of the ethmoid sinus itself and that's what's called the fovea ethmoidalis, that bone coming across here. And we've got our lamina papyracea making up the medial wall of our orbit here or the lateral wall of our ethmoid sinus. Now we can see we've cut the nasal passages in the coronal plane. We can see that there are three turbinates that make up each side of the nasal cavity. We have our superior turbinate, the soft tissue coming down here, our middle turbinate, and our inferior turbinate. And you can see this aerated space lateral to those turbinates. That's what's known as a meatus, our superior meatus, our middle meatus, and our inferior meatus. Now the sinuses drain into specific meati, meatuses, uh, whichever way it is, the frontal sinus and the maxillary sinus, as well as the anterior portion of our ethmoidal sinuses, are going to drain into our middle meatus. Our sphenoid sinus is going to drain into our superior meatus, as well as our posterior ethmoidal cells, they are going to drain into our superior meatus. And that's how we differentiate anterior and posterior ethmoidal sinuses. It's where they drain into. The anterior drains into the middle, posterior ethmoidal drains into the superior sinus. So let's look at these drainage pathways, and these are what you're going to have to look at within a scan when you're assessing the paranasal sinuses. And this used to be done on plain films, but now CT has become the gold standard for looking at these paranasal sinuses. And you can imagine these sinuses are lined with uh, mucus producing cells. They've got cilia pushing that mucus in towards the nasal cavities. And if that were to become blocked for whatever reason, if there was a mass or if you uh, got an infection that's causing swelling of those exit points, we obviously can have buildup of fluid within these sinuses and that's rife for infection. As well as if we have any fractures in these points that can also prevent mucus from coming out of these uh, sinuses. So let's start at the frontal sinus. Now we already know that that drains into the middle meatus. The pathway in which the frontal sinus drains into the middle meatus is what's known as the frontal recess. And I'm going to show you how you can find that frontal recess on the scan. So let's have a look at this right frontal sinus. We can work our way down. 
Now, the anterior ethmoidal cells can share this pathway, can share this frontal recess, and on this coronal plane can be a little bit difficult to see. But let's head our way down. We can see, as you follow my mouse cursor here, I'm staying within the frontal sinus. As I come down, I can then see this pathway here going to the middle meatus. This is what's known as the frontal recess, just like that. Quite easy to identify here. The frontal recess is what, what drains the frontal sinus into the middle meatus. Let's have a look at the maxillary sinus and how that drains. We can see a drainage point here. This is what's known as the osteomeatal complex. It's made up of the maxillary osteum, the opening into this tube. The tube itself is called the infundibulum. And the ending of that tube, the opening up into the middle, middle meatus is what's known as the hiatus semilunaris. So we can follow that on both sides. We can see it here, our osteomeatal complex. Inferior to that infundibulum is this soft tissue protuberance coming out like that. That's what's known as the uncinate process. There's many uncinate processes in the body. We've got the uncinate process in the uh, pancreas. Uncinate meaning hook, coming around like this. And as we're breathing in air from the outside, you can see how this uncinate process prevents air from going directly into the maxillary sinus and diverts it into the nasopharynx itself. So as I mentioned earlier, the anterior ethmoidal cells will drain into the middle meatus. Let's see if we can find any of those coming through now. So here we have an ethmoid cell or ethmoid sinus draining down nicely into that middle meatus. So we know this is an anterior ethmoidal cell. Let's work back to the sphenoid. Now looking at this image here, you can see there's this uh, air-filled uh, region here. And it's important to not confuse that with another sinus. It's not covered, it's not surrounded by bone. This is in fact the nasopharynx as we're going down towards our esophagus like that. So you mustn't confuse this for a sinus. This is our sphenoid sinus here. The bone making up the roof of the sphenoid here is called the planum sphenoidale. Coming up, making up the roof here. We can see our anterior clinoid processes. And we know that the sphenoid then drains into the superior meatus. So if we have a look at the left side of the sphenoid sinus here, we can follow this down. As we come more anteriorly, we're still in that sphenoid sinus, still in that sphenoid sinus. Here we can see it draining into this superior meatus. If we were to go across into the axial view, it's much easier often to see this um, sphenoid draining into the uh, superior meatus. We can see here we've got our sphenoid. As we head down, we can see our right side of the sphenoid draining into the superior meatus, as well as our left side as well, draining into the superior meatus on that side. Here we go there. Again, our posterior ethmoidal cells can also drain into the superior meatus, or should drain by definition into the superior meatus. We can see here, if we've got an ethmoid cell, we follow, there's the drainage point, follow it down, follow it down into the superior meatus. And these passages is what's known as a sphenoethmoidal recess. So our frontal goes through our frontal recess. Posteriorly here into the superior meatus, we have our sphenoethmoidal recesses. Okay, so now we've had a look at the different sinuses. Let's have a look at some of the structures that surround those sinuses. So let's have a look at the coronal plane here and identify some of the structures that lie in close proximity to our sinuses. As I mentioned earlier, our lateral borders of the ethmoidal sinus is a lamina papyracea, a really thin bone here. And if there's any external trauma to the eye, we can get a fracture of these bones here, and we can get communication with the orbit and the sinuses. As we head back posteriorly, we can see our sphenoid sinus come into view here with our anterior clinoid processes. And the major things we need to know about here is one, the optic nerve coming backwards. And slightly lateral to the optic nerve is our carotid artery coming through here. And this bone between the sphenoid sinus and the carotid canal can be extremely thin. And if we're doing some type of surgery in here, if you can imagine if we've got inflamed mucosa and we can't see exactly where we are, it's conceivable that we can break through a thin bone there and uh, that would lead to devastating effects if we were to rupture the carotid artery there. We can have a look in our axial window where we're talking about here. Let's have a look at our carotid canal. You can see how the carotid is in close proximity with the sphenoid sinus. As we scroll further, our carotid canal is going to come forward here into our cavernous sinus. You can see our cella tersica here, 
our optic nerve, if we were to follow that back, follow our optic nerve down here, we can see into the optic canal. That's coming just superior to our um, sphenoid sinus. Here our anterior clinoid process, our posterior clinoid process, and our cella tersica here, which has our pituitary gland in it. Again, very little space between the pituitary gland and our sphenoid sinus. So there we have it, a brief run through of our paranasal sinuses. We've identified the frontal, maxillary, ethmoidal, and sphenoidal sinuses and the pathways into the nasal cavities. And before you go, you might be wondering, okay, well, there's stuff draining into the superior meatus, stuff draining into the middle meatus. What about the inferior meatus? What drains there? Well, it's not left out. We can see here we have a lacrimal recess where our lacrimal sac sits. And as we come down, we can see that our let me get this in the right plane. Here's our lacrimal recess here. Our lacrimal duct sits here. And our nasolacrimal duct will drain into that inferior meatus. We can see here draining down into that inferior meatus there. So that's why when you cry, you have tears coming into the orbit as well as your nose running because there's where the tears would flow into that inferior meatus. So I hope that helped. This is something that's not often covered. I certainly didn't cover it in medical school to, in any depth, but it's really important as a radiologist to know what you're looking for, where you're looking for, and then alerting the surgeons if there's anything in particular they need to look for intraoperatively. So I hope that's helped. I'll see you all in the next anatomy talk. Goodbye, everybody.